Hey guys. So it's time to put a lid on this project, or in this case, a roof. <laughs> and if you watch till the end, you'll see a great gameplay breakdown of how this was used in game in our Princes of the Apocalypse adventure. Scarlet Moon Hall, it was a really great, well, few sessions uh, that this played a part in and um, I'm looking forward to showing you that. So, if you've enjoyed these and you want to hit that like and that subscribe, it would really go a long way to helping me get this channel up and running. Really want to say a big thank you to those that have uh, shown their support for the channel. It's new and still getting to grips with a few things. So thank you for those guys and uh, to you for hitting that like and subscribe. Let's do this. Hey guys, so I miraculously managed to lose the footage where I cut the shapes out for the roof section. But you can kind of see the shape here. It was narrow at the top, wide at the bottom, and then the other two sides curved uh, to meet the corners. Right now, the whole thing is just pinned together, so I need to glue it all up with a uh, hot melt gun. Just to say, the whole of the design of this tower has been kind of just designed as I went. I knew I wanted a sloping roof for the tower um, but I didn't really have much of an idea of what it was going to look like. Um, you can see the tiles there uh, already cut out and that's what I'm doing next even though they're already there now uh, just the way it went with the timing of the footage. <laughs> You can just use a craft knife to cut this uh, craft foam, but I've got this excellent rotary tool um, that um, you can get from the, the sewing machine section uh, for cutting material. Uh, this craft foam is very thin, so it's easy to cut with uh, almost anything. Um, so I'm not interested in measuring out specifically. I know roughly what size I want, and I can just cut several sheets at the same time, so it's nice and fast and uh, just yeah just roll it along and um, chop out the size of the seeds that I want. These are then uh, further cut down just using a pair of scissors and literally in a couple of minutes I had oh, a few hundred piece, uh, sections of tile. Now as I say I knew I wasn't quite sure of the design of this tower but I did know that it wanted a steeple of some description and it also needed to have a playable area on this roof section. So here I'm just playing around with bits that I'd shapes that I'd cut out with a sort of idea of how I might achieve that. And I did go mostly down this route and it worked very, very well, um, as you will see in the gameplay. Time to get going with the hot melt glue gun and just start sticking on these tiles. It went pretty quickly wasn't too worried about where the tiles met the corner, um, I had uh, other ideas for that. I'd cut out a rough plan out of cardboard um, for the steeple to get a sense of what it was I wanted to do, uh, including the uh, sort of the pinnacle of the steeple which I just did from a rolled cone of paper. Um, this is just me playing around with the visual idea, not really settled on the actual structure yet. This is the first tier of the roof and it was made in exactly the same way as the steeple tier and all I'm doing here is using the rotary tool to grind in a very rough and loose um, grid system for playability. I have used the soldering iron to do the same technique. This is a rotary tool. Either process does require a consideration of health and safety. EVA foam either dust or its fumes is not good for your system make sure you wear your mask if you do this because it really is a way of making yourself very ill however it came about my roof structures were looking somewhat like a, the oriental pagoda so i took a look at the pagodas to see how the corner of those structures looked um, which are then marked out on this uh, craft card i scored that down the center so that i could uh, get the form of the corner and then I cut the shape out. I transferred that shape to another piece of card, uh, put a stack of card together and then I ran that through my very trusty bandsaw 
uh, which I've talked about in previous videos. Great piece of equipment. Really cuts down on the time. <laughs> So once they were all scored, folded, they were ready to attach, uh, which was done with hot glue in a similar ma manner to the tiles. I also realised I needed a cross piece that would just sit just at the top of these cornices uh, underneath the eaves of the steeple. The steeple was created using a few scraps of EVA foam uh, cut into a sort of loosely sloping structure on a base and then that base was then attached to a set of pillars. Uh, the pillars again were made from a few scraps of foam. <clears throat> uh, I just drew a sort of gothic style archway design on a piece of foam. The pieces were then taped together and then cut out using my favoured bandsaw. Applying a stone-like texture to EVA foam is very different to XPS foam. First thing you've got to do with EVA to harden it off is hit it with a heat gun to uh, set it. The second thing you need to do is cover it with some form of a sealer. That could be plastic coat. I tend to use PVA. And then for that stone texture, like they get in XPS foam with the tumble stone method, uh, I use a very fine powder known as a browning plaster. And this gives a great surface for the dry brushing techniques that come later in the painting stage. I'm not going to go into too much detail for the painting process that I applied here, simply because it just replicates what was already discussed in the tower wall video. A um, couple of points to note. The building for the game initially was used as Scarlet Moon Hall. Yes I know it's nothing like the map that's in the module. I didn't like the map that was in the module and I needed something else because our narrative had gone in a different direction. So I wanted the roof pieces to have a very scarlet look so I gave them a much redder finish. Um, they were also given gold edge gilting on the cornices, but the upper steeple was still the ruined stone look. So one of the things that was really important to me, as you just saw in the time lapse, I like big and elaborate builds. Um, for purposes of this, I've broken it down to just what we used at the end for the climax. In a big build like that, you still need to be able to have some playability. The players will very much interact with all of the terrain, all of the little hidden gems that are there, uh, which is great. Um, but you really want to be able, when it comes to that conclusion, you want your terrain to really be able to open up to, to full playability uh, with less ambiguity as to what's going on. Our uh, band of adventurers had managed to get to the top of the plateau that had Scarlet Moon Hall. So yeah, these are our guys here. And um, by uh, curious means, they managed to get across to the plateau without actually climbing the cliff face. 
uh, which was unexpected. So they arrived here, somewhat towards the back of this hall. Uh, they had to, a scuffle with some, uh, some ground troops. The party separated into a three-pronged attack. Zef the Ganazi and Bakar the half or barbarian took this rickety stairway to a hidden door in the shadows of the eaves of the tower. But they were unaware of the twisted dryad warriors twisted by the corrupt druid Eliza Dragonfly. Our wizard and cleric circled around the back of the tower, coming to the magically sealed gates. They too came under the attack of the warrior dryads. Meanwhile, in the skies overhead, our fearless Arakokra flew to the steeple to face off with Eliza Dragonfly herself, the corrupt druid who had enslaved the woodlands around the plateau. So with the party surrounding this tower, coming at it from all different directions, that's where the playability that I'd engineered into this build came to the forefront. We took a five minute break, hey guys, go have a coffee, come back and uh, we'll carry on. Zep and Bakar, in their traditional madness, split themselves further still. Bakar went down, Zef headed up. Zef is left alone to deal with the magical crystal that drives the ritual. Meanwhile, Bakar finds himself facing off alone against a warped treant. It's a situation he loves and lives for. Meanwhile, on the outside of the tower, our magic user Iasti and the cleric Malark summon intense magical forces and pull open the doorways to the tower and aid in the defeat of the monstrous tree creature being summoned at the heart of this ritual. With the corruption of Eliza Dragonfly defeated, our intrepid adventurers can descend through the portal into the temple of the Cult of Eternal Flame. So thanks for watching guys, this has been a real pleasure to put together for you, uh, I hope you've enjoyed it, if you have, uh, hit that like, subscribe, do the, uh, the things down there that uh, help the channel grow, um, really appreciative of that. So I will sign off for now and say I will see you next week with, uh, well, we're going to be looking at these playable trees. Take care guys, bye.